Hey guys, how's it going? I want to take a look at another verse that I think might be a big one for the whole Millennial Kingdom doctrine. And let's look at Isaiah chapter 11 verse 6, which says, The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid, and the calf and the young lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. <clears throat> And I think that Kaufman's commentary is really good on this, so I'll just read through this. Uh, it says, This is one of the most talked about passages in the Bible, and that is a mainstay of many premillenarian groups of believers, most of whom appeal to the passage in Romans 8.22, The whole creation groaneth and travaileth together in pain until now, which I've just previously went over in another video. Supposing that in the millennium, the lower animate... Uh, creation shall participate in the blessings of redemption in Christ when that day arrives. Regarding that verse in Romans, the word for creation means exactly what the same word means in Mark 16:15, namely all mankind having no reference whatever to the lower creation such as animals. And so I wanted to look at Mark 16:15, and uh, which, you know, this would have been interesting for the other video. But either way, Mark 16, 15 says, And he said unto them, Go ye and preach the gospel to every creature. And so that's true. That doesn't mean that we go and preach the gospel to the bears and to the deer and to butterflies and insects and animals. Okay, every creature means men. Men and women, mankind. You get the idea. It's the same thing in Romans eight twenty two. All creation groans. It means mankind. And I've just uploaded a couple of clips, one from Robert Breaker, one from Gregory Miller, where they're pretty much saying that the earth itself, plants, animals, rocks, etc., are groaning. And so they're teaching without understanding is what they're doing. That's, that's what I'm trying to point out. It's not the gospel, but we need to cut the crap and quit the, you know, try to our best to do the, uh, you know, to not teach without understanding. But at the same time, you know, nobody's perfect, right, and uh, people make mistakes, but I'm trying to understand the Bible the best that I can, and sharing with you what I'm learning. But continuing here on Kaufman's commentary, it says that theories always assume that such harmony among the lower orders of life existed, existed in Eden prior to the fall of Adam. And the conditions mentioned in this verse would be merely the restoration of what once previously existed. But there is no biblical evidence of such. There is not a word in all the Bible that backs up such fantastic theories. Our understanding of this paragraph views it not as not literal in any sense whatsoever. Note that the peace, harmony, and tranquility depicted here exist only in God's holy mountain. Isaiah 11.9 Not all over the world. This passage can no more be taken literally than the description of a sprout coming up out of Jesse, or of a rod, or a sharp sword coming out of the mouth of the Messiah. The prophet is not looking to a time when animals of the natural world will live without enmity, but he is describing the peace of those in Jehovah's holy mountain, the kingdom of God. As Archer put it, the picture of the fierce predatory animals living peaceably with the weak and defenseless, symbolizes the removal of all natural fear and hostility between men, which is much more of a powerful message to me than, uh, you know, uh, some physical millennial kingdom where animals are literally, you know, getting along and such. Uh, the, the spiritual, uh, metaphorical um, interpretation of it is to me, far more fulfilling. It's the truth of the scripture. Um, let's see, what's to say? Peaky also rejected the notion that this paragraph refers literally to wild beasts because such a notion would be utterly contrary to the fact that Isaiah attributed the wonderful conditions described to a diffusion of the knowledge of Jehovah in Isaiah 9. Peace among men and God's kingdom is intended. So, uh, Isaiah 11, 9. 
they shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord, as the waters cover the sea. And so, uh, again, I think millennial, or millennial kingdom teachers would say that the earth would be full of the knowledge of the Lord, because the Lord's physically there, reigning on the earth, and, and he's ruling, and he's teaching, or something, and so turning it into this literal uh, stuff is, is nonsense, and it really robs the true message of Scripture. And uh, so just think about that. That's Isaiah 11.6. And I'll look at more over time. So God bless.